This is George Dillon, who's going to be performing at Pentecost Festival. George, what are you going to be performing at this year's festival? I am performing the Gospel of Matthew. Uh, over three nights, the 18th, 19th and 20th of May. Uh, on the 18th, I'm in St Paul's Church in Coldham Garden, the Actors' Church. Uh, which I'm very excited about. I'm excited about all of them. The next one, next night, the Wednesday the 19th, is St. James Piccadilly, uh, a particularly beautiful church as well. And the, th the third night, Thursday the 20th of May, is Bloomsbury Central Baptist Church. So you've done lots of other solo performances before uh, this one. What made you choose to perform the Gospel of Matthew? There were, there were a number of triggers. Um, touring in the 80s and 90s, I was quite often reading the Bible when I was on tour. Uh, the Gideon Bible was quite often the only thing to read in, in guest houses. Uh, but I also had an interest in scripture as source for drama. And I was aware, very aware that other dramatists had tackled other parts of scripture, but the gospel isn't one that is dealt with by serious theatre very much. It has been done on film a lot, but not by theatre. And so I looked at Job, I looked at Ecclesiastes, uh, I looked at Revelations, and I kept asking myself, why not do the big one? Why not do the Gospel? And so I was reading the Gospel uh, uh, to try to decide which one. And a key event was, I was sitting on uh, the station, uh, the concourse at Euston Station, and I heard a drunk shouting out, Hey, St. Bob, AIDS to Africa! And I looked up and Bob Geldof was walking across the station. I'd been spotted by the drunk. And uh, he's a very tall man and he had a cowboy hat which he was putting down over his eyes, trying to, trying to hide. Um, and when I saw him, I thought, ah, holy man, I must get up and follow him. I just, just, I don't, I forget where I'm going, I'm going after him, I want to be with him. And I, it made me think of the fishermen and how they were called. And, and Matthew as opposed to the other three, well that's because Matthew has more of Jesus in it, he has more speech than in the other three. But I tell you, love your enemies. And the character is quite difficult, quite contradictory. Um, he's not the gentle Jesus, meek and mild, that people expect uh, perhaps when they come see the show. So it's quite a challenge. He's an angry, an angry Jesus. He's angry with humanity, but he's human in his in his anger. Don't announce it with a fanfare first, like the hypocrites do in the churches and in the streets, for people to see, for truly I tell you, they have their reward. And I find that a fascinating uh, dialectic to play out, the, the message of love, but the anger with which it's delivered. So apart from a really entertaining night and a great show, um, what will people who come and see the show go away with at the end of the night? The story, as I'm sure you know, is a bit of a roller coaster. Um, you, you have all the optimism and the love of the Sermon on the Mount, but then the horror of the Passion. You cannot serve God and money. So I want the show to be something which will inspire people and challenge people and then make them revisit and question their own faith. You've heard it was said to our ancestors, you shall love your neighbour and hate your enemy. But I tell you, love your enemies and pray for those that persecute you, so you may become sons of your Father in heaven. For he makes the sun rise on the evil and on the good, and he makes the rains fall on the just and on the unjust. For if you love those that love you, where's the merit in that? Don't the occupation forces do the same? And if you are welcoming only to your brothers, what's so special? Don't the Gentiles do the same? So, be perfect as your heavenly Father is perfect. Take care not to do your good deeds in public so as to impress people, or you'll have no reward from your Father in heaven. And when you do charitable things, don't announce it with a fanfare first, like the hypocrites do in the churches and in the streets, for people to see, for truly I tell you, they have their reward.
but when you do charitable things, don't let your left hand know what your right hand is doing, so your charity is in secret, and your Father, secretly watching, will reward you. And when you pray, don't be like the hypocrites who love to pray standing in the churches and the streets for people to see, for truly I tell you, they have their reward. But when you pray, Go into a private room, shut the door, and pray to your father in secret, and your father, secretly watching, will reward you. And when you pray, don't prattle on like the Gentiles. They think the more they say, the more they'll be heard. So don't be like that. For your father knows what you need before you ask. But when you pray, pray like this. Father! In heaven. May your name be honoured. May your kingdom come! Your will be done here on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today strength for what is coming. And forgive us our wrongs, as we forgive those who do us wrong. And do not put us to the test, but save us from evil. For if you forgive others their wrongs, your Father will also forgive you. But if you don't forgive others, neither will your Father forgive you your wrongs. Don't judge people, and you won't be judged for. As you judge, so you'll be judged. And as you value, so you will be valued. Don't treasure your treasures here on earth, where thieves break in steel, and moths and rust corrupt and destroy. But treasure your treasures in heaven, where neither thieves break in steel, nor moths or rust corrupt or destroy. For where your treasure is, there is your heart. No man can serve two masters, or he will 